Hello, and welcome to another episode of CUDACasts. In the previous episode, I introduced you to the basics of Thrust, a C++ template library for parallelism. I'll continue the Thrust miniseries in this video and show you more of what makes Thrust such a powerful and flexible massively parallel library. In addition to the built-in algorithms and operations, Thrust makes use of functors to extend its capabilities. A functor is a function object, which is an object that can be called as if it were an ordinary function. In C++, a functor is just a class or struct that defines the function call operator. Because they are objects, functors can be passed, along with their state, to other functions as a parameter. Thrust lets you apply custom operations inside its algorithms by passing a functor to the algorithm. Thrust comes with a handful of predefined functors, but I'll also show you how to write your own and use it in a Thrust algorithm. For our simple contrived program, we want to generate 500 million random floats on the CPU and then transfer them to the device. As we did this in the previous video, we'll start our code from there. Now that we have our values on the device, let's next create a temporary vector which is the negative of each element of the input. I can do this with the thrust transform function. However, since I don't want to overwrite the original vector in my case, I'm going to create a temporary vector to hold the result of the transform. We set the size of the temporary vector to be the same size as our input vector. The transform function call looks like this. The last parameter to this function is our functor. Since this functor is a template object, we have to tell it what type of values it will be expecting, in our case floats. We also have to put parentheses as we're calling the constructor, which instantiates the function object. Alternatively, we could declare an object like this. And pass it in as the last parameter to transform. So now dtemp holds the negated values of our input vector. Next in our program, I want to do a minimize reduction on our dtemp vector. A reduction takes a number of elements and reduces them down to a single value, and in a minimize reduction, it will be the minimum value of all elements. The third parameter is the initial element used in the reduction. For a minimum reduction, I can just use the first element in the vector, like so. And the last argument is the built-in minimize functor. And finally, we'll print out our value. We compile with NVCC as in our previous video like so. Set our optimization level, specify the architecture we're targeting, in my case SM35. And we run this. Running it, we see it took about 0.8 seconds to transfer the data, do the transformation, and then the reduction. Now one problem with the program as written is we're using a large, temporary vector on the device to hold the results of the transform before we do the reduction. In addition to the extra memory used, we're doing a lot of read and writes to global memory, which we want to avoid if possible. Because this transform and reduce pattern is so common, Thrust has a built-in combined transform reduce function, which eliminates the extra memory and read and writes and is called kernel fusion. So let's modify our code and try that. First, I'm gonna delete this reduce call. We'll move our init variable above the transform. And we will now use the transform reduce function. We no longer need our temp vector. The third parameter is the functor that transform will use. And the last two parameters are the reduction as before. We can now delete our temporary vector. Change our init value to use the original vector. And then finally, we'll modify our headers to use the transform reduce file and eliminate the separate copies. We'll just recompile this. 
and run again. And you can see with just a simple change, we got the same answer. And for less code, we got more speed. Now, what if I wanted to change our transform to square the value of each element instead of returning the negative? Well, a quick th look through the Thrust documentation shows there is no built-in square functor. So we'll have to write our own. And we do this with a structure. The host device line tells the MVCC compiler to create both a device and a host version of this function to maintain portability between CPUs and GPUs. We're overloading the function call operator, which can take any number of input parameters and return any type of output parameter. It's the most versatile of the overloadable operators. The actual function just returns the element times itself. Now that we have our functor, let's use it in our transform reduce call. Now let's compile again and run this. And it runs successfully. You could also create your own functor for the reduce part of the algorithm. You would just create a functor that takes in two elements and returns a single value, or what's called a binary operation. The square operation we wrote was a unary operator. It only took one element as input. We have now seen some of the more useful algorithms available in Thrust, as well as the flexibility and power that comes from creating your own functors to pass into these algorithms. In future episodes in the Thrust miniseries, we'll cover other topics such as fancy iterators and other powerful algorithms available. Thanks for watching this episode of CUDACasts.